Hello friends, this video on principles of inheritance part 27 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us try to understand what is linkage. So what is linkage? The word link, what does it tell you? You see a small image which I have put on the top of the screen. What does that tell you? That all these people are linked to each other. They are connected to each other. So linkage means something connected. So a connection between two things, two people or two genes in this case. So when we talk about linkage in genetics, we actually talk about physical association between genes which are located on the same chromosome. Now as I mentioned before also that on one chromosome there can be thousands of genes located. Right? Now if there is a physical linkage between two genes then we say that those two genes are linked. So what happens if there is a physical association between two genes? Let us have a look at that. So based on this linkage, we can have two types of genes. One is linked genes and the other one is unlinked genes. So linked genes are those which are present on the same chromosome and they do not show independent assortment. Now when I say independent assortment, that means like I was giving you examples before, right? Mendelian principle of independent assortment. Well, when I was telling that if we consider two traits, for example, in Mendel's dihybrid cross, he considered two traits. One was the shape of the seed and the other was the color of the seed. And he said that the gametes, that is capital R, small r, they segregate independently of how capital Y, small y segregate because the shape of the uh, seed and the color of the seed, they two are independent of each other. So those two genes are basically independent of each other. Right? Okay. But now the concept of linkage says that if there is a linkage, if the two genes are linked, let us suppose if you have a chromosome like this and you have two genes, let us say gene A and gene B and if gene A and B are linked together, they can then these two can never separate. So they will always remain together. So please try to understand this. So this is one chromosome, this is the homologous chromosome where you have their counterpart, right? So what happens in case of independent assortment, all of them just separate out. So A can combine with B, A can also combine with small b. Let us suppose if here it has the counterpart of capital B is small b here, right? So A can combine with B, A can also combine with B. So that is how it was in case of independent assortment. But in case of linked genes, A will always be linked to B. So A and B will never separate out. So they will not be able to follow Mendel's principle of independent assortment. So they will always be inherited together. So let us suppose if I say that uh, the seed color and the seed shape, if they are linked genes, that means if the seed color is yellow, the seed shape will always be round. So yellow and round will always go together. So yellow can never combine with wrinkled, round can also never, I mean, uh, Round can also never combine with green. So yellow and round will always be together from one generation to the next generation to the next generation and so on. So what will happen? So basically the parental combination are getting are coming in, the, in all the future generations. Correct? So that is what is happening in this case. So in case of linked genes, it has been seen that they have a dihybrid ratio of 3 is to 1. So what do we mean by dihybrid ratio? So if a dihybrid cross is performed for linked genes, it is seen that the ratio which is obtained is 3 is to 1. So let us try to see how exactly it happens. Okay. Let us take an example here. So let us suppose that we have two genes. Let us suppose this is a chromosome and on this chromosome we have two genes A and B and this is the homologous chromosome where we have their counterpart. So by now you know that these two are the same type of gene. If this is eye color, this is also eye color. But this eye color can be red, this eye color can be white or they both can be same also. So let us consider a situation like this and we say that A and B are linked. 
So if I say A and B are linked, that means A and B will always be together. So if A is for red eye color and if B is for black hair color, that means red eye color and black hair color will always be together. So all the individuals, all the next generations will have red eye color and black hair color. So both things will come together. It, that is what it means. So in this case, what will happen now in the F1 generation, if you have capital A, small a, capital B, small b. Let us suppose this is the F1 generation, right? So what are the possible gametes from the F1 generation? So the possible gametes from F1 generation would be AB and AB. Now since A and B are linked, similarly A and B are also linked. Now these two are linked, so these two will always go together. These two are linked, these two will always go together. So therefore these are the only possible gametes. You cannot have further combination because A cannot combine with small b. Similarly, small a cannot combine with capital B. So these are the only possibilities here. So you just get two types of gametes for the F2 generation, right? So these are the only possible gametes in this case. Whereas on the other hand, if you talk about the unlinked genes, what happens in these genes? These genes are located on different chromosomes. So they are like not, there is no physical association between the two genes. Also, they can be considered as unlinked genes if they are located on the same chromosome, but they are very wide apart. They are far apart from each other. So they are also, then also they are considered as unlinked. They show independent assortment. Now, since there is no physical linkage, it doesn't matter. So everybody can independently assort in their own way, right? So in this case, if you have the same scenario, where you have a heterozygous A, A, B, B. So in that case, how many gametes are possible? So in this case, you can have total four gametes. Right? So these would be the four possible gametes here. Now in this case, since you have gametes like this, therefore more recombinants will be formed. So the, so the future generations will have some fat parental traits or some parental combinations, but more recombinations will be there, right? Because more number of gametes are formed, so what happens? The more the number of gametes, the more the newer combinations you will be able to see in the future generations, correct? So this was the reason why the F2 ratio obtained in the Morgan's experiment was different from the F2 ratio which was obtained in the Mendel's experiment. Because in Mendel's experiment, he considered unlinked genes. So therefore, more number of gametes were produced, so more recombinations were there. So more new combinations were there and we were able to see 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. But in case of the Morgan's experiment, there was a linkage between the genes and as a result, the F2 generation showed most of them as the parental combinations and very few recombinations were present. Right? Now you might ask, now in this case, if these are the only gametes that it can produce, in that case, there should be no recombination at all. So all should be like exactly identical to the parents. So how are the recombinations coming up? So that is what we will take up a little later, that how that little bit of recombination is coming in, we will discuss that in detail a little later. But before that, let us first try to understand the concept of linkage a little better. Thank you. Please visit www.examclear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.